On this week's episode, we are talking about Python coming to Excel. That's very interesting. Developing in the Office app. Uh, OneDrive and SharePoint are getting colorful folders. And you're going to be able to disallow reactions when you send emails. Let's roll it. We're back and you can go ahead. So welcome everyone to the big three double O episode 300. We're not celebrating cause Daryl doesn't want to do that, but nope. we're, we're at least going to just say it is the big three O O. I think you're disappointed o. because, because you wanted cake, right? I, I like cake people. Uh, if you see me, and you're like, you know, I don't know what to get Daniel for his birthday or for his, you know, whatever. Cake is, <laughs> is the answer. <laughs> for, his, for his whatever. Hey, yeah, Daniel. I mean, just, um, I'm Daniel, just going to get you cake, whatever. Right. It's your Wednesday. You know, happy Wednesday, Daniel. Here's some cake. Um, yes, absolutely. <laughs> totally going to do that for you when I see you in person. <laughs> just turn up and go, Cake. <laughs> um yes cake is you can eat it too (laughs) it is delicious Um, it's not nutritious um but it's just delicious so uh welcome everyone to this episode where we are going to bring some value it's going to be amazing so you might as well go ahead and hit that thumbs up on the video in youtube on the audio podcast go ahead and give us a star rating in whatever podcast app you're using that helps other people find the podcast please help us by doing that uh, and follow us on all the socials at 365 mcs while you're listening you can go ahead and do that we know you're multitasking anyway so you might as well go to twitter and insta and all of the socials that matter and follow us at 365 MCS LinkedIn. We're there. Uh, go ahead and give us a follow because what you're going to find there is a post saying, hey, check out this link. Here is how you can enter the giveaway for the ticket to ESPC. That's right. On all our socials, there's a post that says, here's how you enter. And there's going to be multiple ways for you to enter and getting in on this contest so you can win a three-day pass to the the European SharePoint and Office 365 and Azure conference that's happening in November. We are giving away a ticket and you can win it. So you got to be on the socials to see how you can enter. Uh, and uh, it's it's amazing. So you're going to have multiple options, multiple ways of doing it. And there's going to be a post there. So check it out. Fantastic. Exciting, good girl? news. Yeah. It is. And it's it's good to be able to support uh, another good cause for people to get together and learn about mm-hmm. Microsoft 365, Azure, and all related technologies. Absolutely. And speaking of uh, related technologies, Daryl. Oh, no, wait. Um, I've just got to pause here um, and say I'm going to be interested in how you will try to segue with this colossal title you do need to take a drink Um, before you try go ahead yes so related technologies would be uh, i'm also interested in this related technology of microsoft edge and how uh microsoft teams is interacting with that for chats i'll give that about a 70 percent. that was okay Okay. used a few of the keywords yeah all right breathe in with me everyone as we try and read this Web links from Microsoft Teams chats to open in Microsoft Edge. Semicolon Teams chats will open side by side with link. MC 669480. Um, This is like trying to read some ancient Sanskrit and having to break it down into all the origins of... It's such a long phrase. Um, but the message actually is is pretty straightforward, Daniel. It's um, it's something that we had introduced a little ways back with Outlook, where 
we could um, earlier we could click a link in in a email and it would open in our favorite browser our default browser and then something happens all of a sudden people were reporting I'm clicking a link and it's opening edge what's up with that why is it doing that and um, this message is all about bringing that same capability to teams chat click a link in a teams chat it's going to open that link in uh, Microsoft Edge. Daniel, I was looking at this and the story behind it is actually, there's, there's good intentions behind it, of course. This is not just about saying you should use Edge. But when it was brought out with Outlook, it was about trying to open the content from that link alongside the message. Have you, have you seen how Edge works? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, bringing that, it's kind of a... Uh, you know, another window or another um, yeah. uh, way, you know, another pane of seeing all the information that relates to it at the same time. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I understand why they do it because of the functionality is in that, you know, in the edge and not in Chrome, for instance. But, um, but yeah, I mean, uh, I've seen the way it works. Uh, I, I like it, right? You get to see the context. Mm, mm. Yeah, it, it, the idea is that you've got your message alongside the content so you can still engage in the message and respond there, but also look at the content. Uh, and because Outlook is um, uh, built into Edge in the sense that you can sign in and look at your message list like I've got here on screen, uh, it means that if I was to click that link, then it will display the message in that pane. It will show the content in the bulk or body of the of the window mm-hmm. i'm not sure how this is going to look and and when we bring that link over into teams though i don't see that there'll be a teams message uh displayed over here on the right and over here in the the bulk of the window the content that we're launching but that's what they're intending to do now there is a bit of information about um what you can do to change that behavior uh, it is all controlled via uh, config or the cloud policies. You go to config.office.com and you can tune a policy uh, to suit your needs there. If you want to stick with the default that's been configured on the user's desktop or if you're going to uh, configure it to, to to choose this new behavior with opening Edge. If you leave the policy unconfigured, it's going to default to using Edge. So take a look at that. Um, decide for yourselves as an organization what you want that, that behavior to, to do. Uh, you can, if you think about it, using this policy, you can attune it to just a specific group of people using the security group. Try it out. See if it's going to be suitable for, for people. But... Um, you know, just uh, take a look. Um, there's, what else is there? In terms of timing, uh, for Teams desktop app uh, for Windows, the change has started rolling, will start rolling out late December, September, sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so it, it um, sort of follows that same outlook for Windows uh, policy, which is, um, yeah, rolling out. So, yeah, moving on to away from that massive uh, title to something much more succinct. <laughs> Tell us about this um, this uh, snake in Excel. Ah, look at you. Preview Python in Excel, MC669648. Yes, that's right. They're bringing a snake, as Daryl called it, um, a Python into Excel, bringing developer powers to uh, really to Excel. Um, I, I, first I looked at this and I went, okay, wait a minute. We're in Excel. We're able to do formulas. We're able to, you know, do graphs and charts. We're able to do all sorts of things, you know, utilizing what we already have. So I, I really was like, I don't know what this is going to do. Um, however, uh, really what brought it to my kind of opened my eyes to what the capabilities could be. Um, is when I looked at the blog post. Uh, it was posted on the 22nd of August. Uh, that it's, There's a link at the bottom of this message. And it kind of gives some information about, you know, all of the different ways of doing this. But then it starts talking about, well, you're going to be able to do 
uh, more advanced visualizations, for instance, because you're going to be able to use libraries, separate libraries uh, from Python, like charting libraries. Um, the some libraries from for Python that allow you to do machine learning type and forecasting and predictive analytics. I mean, uh, data cleansing. There's some okay. This is some you could get some really powerful things going on here with uh, with Python in Excel. So, uh, and I think one thing that uh, so once I got over that hump of like, wait a minute, why why are we doing this? Um, I was starting to get excited and then they make a point and I think it's a very valid point with this, a very um, needed point to, to say is that it is not this, we're not releasing, you know, code to go wild in your environment, right? It's, it's a, mm. in the security context and of, of what you're working in and it's not, um, uh, it, it is not kind of going out and going crazy. And so it, it, it really is a safe way of doing this and, and integrating this into your workbook. Um, and then at the end of that blog post, it also has, you know, some, uh, quotes from KPMG, uh, McKinney and McGraw Hill about how they have used it. They were using it, um, in private preview, I'm assuming, um, to, you know, to start using this. And so there's actual real world, you know, insights on how they're using it. Um, so I think, you know, from my initial reaction was, huh, to, Hey, this actually could be really cool. I, I can't wait to see how people in the community really start utilizing this. Um, and, and, and it's going to be available, uh, really with no setup required. Um, so it, it does detail in the blog post, uh, you know, some, what you're going to need to do, right? Because, um, this is for, this is a preview, it's a public preview. So you're going to need to be in the insiders program, which is, it's really easy to sign up. You can do that within office application to do that. Um, but you're going to need to be in the insiders program beta channel, to be able to get this through for the public preview before then it will be generally available to everyone. Um, now, as we say all that to say the bad news, okay? <laughs> the bad news is once the preview, once the feature does become available for everybody, you know, not in preview, an additional Python in Excel, quote unquote, Python in Excel license will be required to use the feature. Oh. Yeah. So uh, they do not have, but you might be saying, but Daniel, that seems interesting. What kind of features and functionality would you get if you pay for it? I, I don't know. Um, like, will they have a, a feature set for free and then a feature set if you pay? I don't know. Uh, how much will it be, Daniel? Tell us. This is important information. I agree with you, listeners. However, we don't know. Uh, so, um, uh, you know, I suggest getting, you know, jump in and, and start playing with it. Uh, but expect if it's one of those things, if it's worth, if it's worth it, then, you know, it'll be something that you'll pay for. Um, but um, yeah. we just don't know how much that'll be right now. So, um so this is rolling out again. This is this public preview. So you have to be in the program uh, again, free to do that. Uh, we'll be rolling out a late August and expect it to be completed by early September. So in just, uh, you know, a week or two, uh, it'll be available for you to, to jump in. Daryl, are you going to, what do you think about this? I mean, it's, it's bringing some, it's like plugging in this, this thing that, you know, like it, my first reaction again was, why are we developing in Excel? Um, mm -hmm. But I, I feel like it could be powerful. Yeah, I, I agree. I think um, for the extra visualization or treating of data within Excel, um, it's going to be great. I'm not a developer, so I, I can't have that full appreciation, but maybe I'd benefit from the results. Uh, I'm also interested seeing that whole containerization 
uh, that they're trying to you know really lower your concerns that don't worry this is code that's going to be running in a separate security container it's not going to run off and do other strange things uh, it's mm -hmm. all all uh, treated safely so like the look of that yeah so uh, let's switch gears from developing in Excel, which is, again, uh, it's kind of interesting uh, to say it that way, to drawing on our screens. <laughs> well, it's something that we've been able to do in a few different Office products uh, already. We could uh, open up PowerPoint, for example. We've been able to do it for OneNote, of course. And there's been this ink tab. But guess what? Inking support is coming to new Outlook, MC. 670030. New Outlook. This being the uh, the Outlook that uh, feels like it's a progressive web app, looks like Outlook on the web, uh, and that capability will be coming to touch enabled devices. Uh, so you will be able to insert a canvas into uh, your message. Uh, let's just maybe blow this up a bit. Uh, let's the blow it up roulette. Okay, it's a reasonable size on screen. That's great. Uh, the draw tab, which you have seen, as I said, in other different Office products, uh, you'll have your different pens, your lasso, and things like that. You can add a drawing canvas and then add the content there. On touch enabled devices, pen enabled devices like Surface as well. Doesn't really talk about whether we're going to have it within uh, Outlook on, let's say, iPad, for example. Uh, this is purely at this moment focused on new Outlook, uh, but you know, Daniel, uh, how many people are going to be drawing the words "hello" in a canvas <laughs> on, I, I feel, uh, on the Outlook message? Yeah, I feel like it, it probably could have been a better job here of giving us an example, maybe um, that yeah. was business related, um, but. Um, I'm trying, I think it's more for me, um, if I'm sending a message, you know, maybe it's a signature, um, maybe it's, um, you know, just for a personalized kind of thing, not, um, not, I don't mean like an email signature, but actually handwritten, maybe it's a, mm. um, a funny drawing, or maybe it's a, a paste of a screen, uh, shot, you know, that, that of a, something you're trying to highlight in the email and you can draw an arrow that says this thing and you circle it and say, pay attention to mm. this, you know, those kind of things maybe, uh, could be used, uh, you know, helpful for the drawing action in Outlook in the new Outlook. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think this is just a quick message to say that inking has been added, uh, for those who, who use it and will, rub their grubby fingers across their screens and then <laughs> frantically start wiping the screen to clean it. Great. Uh, anyway, it, it will begin rolling out September uh, 2023 and expected to be complete late September. And I think we have, we have another reasonably quick message, mm -hmm. maybe, uh, which is all about connectors and teams. Tell us more, Daniel. Well, I would say it's actually more about workflows instead of connectors. Uh, uh, but, you know, We'll, we'll see. Okay. Workflows replacing connectors within Microsoft Teams channels menu, MC670029. This is uh, when you go to in Teams and you click the three dots up at the top and go into the channel, like you're in a channel, and you go up to the three dots, you click it. When you do so, you can. there's a connectors um option and then when you go to connectors it you are able to connect to things like jira and other services that allow pe uh, messages to be posted in your team channel right uh what's mm -hmm. happening is they're going to replace that functionality they say because uh you know in to provide the best workflow experience they're going to be replacing this type of connector with Power Automate. So they're going to want you to instead use Power Automate to do those connections between, well, I mentioned Jira before, uh, to your team's channel. Uh, so what they're going to do is when you go uh, to the aforementioned menu, the three dots, and you click it, instead of saying connectors, it's going to say workflows. Now, keep that in your back pocket or in the... In, 
not your back pocket maybe, but uh, keep that in mind here and I'll, I'll come back to it. Um, if, if not, listeners remind me. Not Daryl, but you listeners remind me if I don't come back to it. Um, but so that's what it, instead of seeing connectors, you're going to see workflows. And then you're going to be able to still see the existing connectors that you have for your team by going to the uh, overflow menu, quote unquote, in the manage channel. So when you go to, you know, oh. instead of in the top right and on the channel itself, you say manage channel and then you're going to be able to see it when they make this change. It'll it'll show up in that area um, as being connectors that you already have. And I'm assuming that you're not going to be able to create new ones, new connectors that way. You're just going to be able to manage the existing ones you have uh, already connected. I hear... <laughs> Uh, I paused there, and then I heard a listener in the future um, saying, Hey, Daniel, you forgot about workflows. You wanted me to remind you. Thank you very much for doing that. Uh, I find this interesting because Power Automate doesn't call them workflows. Like It calls them flows. Yeah. In fact, there's you go to Power Automate site, there's no – you don't see workflows, the, that term, anywhere. Um, you know, I think they're very on brand, very specific that they do not say workflows. They say flows. Um, so I think it's interesting that they're, that's the way they're integrating in teams that you're going to pick workflows. Um, I would expect it to be, you know, automate automations or even power automate flows or something, but using workflows, (laughs) it's a consistency thing. Like, You know, anything else that connects with Power Automate, I I was just trying to remember, I don't know of any that says workflows, and then you click on that and it takes you to Power Automate. I don't know a single one. Uh, If if you do, leave a comment below. Love to hear what those examples are. Ping us on socials, tag us, and say, hey, here's a few. That's fine. I'm happy to learn. Um, So uh, so is that, Daryl, what do you think about this? Do you think this is... um, I, I feel like, you know, this could be more powerful in that with these connections, it was single, a single thing. Like you're just connecting mm. that service with Teams. With Power Automate, you can not only connect it, but you can do other things too, right? Uh, you yeah. can have various things. So it does bring power, right? Um, more power than than just those yeah. connectors. I, I, th- I think people have been using the flows anyway and power automate to to do what they need to do and maybe connectors have not been used as much so it's more about let's bring this concept of a connector into flows and do more with it and centralize that experience yeah maybe so so targeted release beginning rolling out late august so now-ish and expected to be completed by mid-September. Standard release, mid-September through late September. And can I take about five seconds just to say, wow, we're already in late August? Holy cow. Anyway, all right. (laughs) Um, Sorry, I was just like, wow, I just read that and went, where has this year gone? You know, Uh um, what I would really like to do is have yet another way to trial something in Microsoft 365 and not have to talk to admins about it. Tell me, can I do that, Daryl? Oh, well, I, I don't want to disappoint you, but you'll still have to talk to your admin. Let's, we'll get into why wow. in this message. But, but the message, I oh, know, Daniel, I know you. The, the, the admin is you, by the way. So, you know, if you've got a disagreement, it's between you and Daniel. So hmm. you guys just go and sort that out somewhere in a quiet corner. Thanks. Teams Premium Trial, MC670435. Microsoft want to uh, allow your people to self-provision and try out Teams Premium. Take a good look at it for 60 days. Get used to the details and, oh, this is really cool. And then, um, well, that's going to give some signals through to your admin. Your admin's going to see, oh. There's some people who are trying this out. I can see this. Uh, I can see how they're using it, what they're using. And and all of these signals will maybe uh, help to, I don't know, uh, collate to some buying power or decision about, oh, maybe we should get this for a few people. That's the intention anyway. 
So, Daniel, you know, back to your question, I, you'll still have to talk to your admin. At the end of the 60-day trial, uh, it will uh, stop working and yeah, uh, you, but you'll my, have that my conversation. Po- my point, though, was to get the trial without talking to the admin. Uh, so you right, still right. do okay. get that, right? Right? Yeah. Yeah, 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 right. you will. Okay, good, will. good, good, yep. good. <laughs> All right, so that's that's the the crux of it. Um, it's it's interesting um, to be able to do that. Uh, we've seen this in, in other products as well, even to the point where you can put in your credit card details and uh, pay for it yourself. But not so with this. There's no credit card details, no monetary information being dropped in or exchanged. It's purely just giving you an option to try this out, and then you talk to admins and your uh, your people with the um, the checkbooks to to sign and get budgetary approval to make that happen uh, so when is this this is beginning uh, late September the ability to go in uh, I didn't see too many details wouldn't mind actually seeing what this looks like as a user experience would have been great to have seen a screenshot to say what do we look out for um, and I don't know, maybe there is somewhere in here some information about how to turn that capability off, maybe. I don't know if you scan through and can see that. I don't see it. Oh, yeah, Global can use the same self-provisioning purchase tools to disable self-service trials. So you can. You can disable that ahead of time. Good, good. Um, All right, well, uh, moving into into colored folders, Daniel. Yes. (laughs) Beautiful colors. Everyone loves colors. OneDrive and SharePoint colored folders, MC670439. There's been a lot of hubbub about this since it was first announced oh, a little while back. Not, not you know, a few. It's been several weeks. Um, so you're going to be able to color folders within OneDrive and SharePoint libraries. And there's going to be 16 colors you can choose from. And really, this is more of a way of organizing your folders in a visual way. Um, so you can come up with your own way of doing this, uh, of, of you know, selecting, well, you know, maybe all of my blue folders has something to do with, um, I don't know, presentations and green ones all have to do with something to do with money. I don't know. Uh, you could come up with your own scheme. Uh, to to what these colors you know what the what it represents uh, when you're making these changes to folders. Um, this is uh, one thing I do want to. Um, it, it picks yellow by default, by the way, just to let you know. But of course, you can change it. Um, one thing that I have seen and brought there was an issue brought up was with this. There was an issue with document sets, maybe that that the the icon for a document set now looks exactly like a folder, um, or or something like that. Um, I can't remember exactly who brought that up. It may have been Mark Anderson, but um, I'll have to go back and look. Um, but just beware that this may be causing an issue there, and so that um, there may be some things you need to look into to. If you're using document sets, maybe you need to alert your users that that change is happening, um, and just you know, just letting you know that that's something that you'll that you'll have to take a look at. Um, and so it's just going to be in the menu uh, folder color, and you're going to be able to select it. Daryl, are you going to be using this functionality at all? I think I'll use it on a small scale, uh, just to be able to organize folders in different ways. I I, I do have a some common colors are used to show what's maybe billable work and what's internal projects and, and things like that. So I, um, I can see it being useful at, you know, that one drive level personally to organize it. But, but when it comes to colors uh, within uh, teamwork, then it's going to be all about coming to an ag- agreed meaning around what those colors are and, you know, what they're for. Gotcha. Um, so, uh, I, I'm looking forward to it, to play around with it, see how I can, uh, improve my productivity, uh, and, and making things visual instead of having to, you know, read what the folder says instead I can check out the color and then read. Uh, so interesting. it'll be interesting. So rolling this out late August. So now ish, 
uh, expected to be completed by early October. So there's a couple, uh, a, a month or so of, of time of rolling this out. And then U.S. Security slash U.S. NAT. I've, I've, I'm not I haven't heard that before. What those, I don't even know what that means. Um, rollout will begin mid-September and expect to be by early October. Maybe is that the, um, is that like the the DOD and government? Um, yeah, and government clouds maybe. But I've never. Am I behind the times? Maybe I. Maybe they changed it and didn't tell me. I don't know. <laughs> they did it People this week, Daniel. While you're at conference, they didn't let you know. Right. They changed everything. They always change things when I'm gone. So anyway. Uh, so let's wrap this up, Daryl, and let's talk about that, that this, I think this is maybe the, one of the (laughs) most interesting things I wanted to talk about in this show, which is turning off those stinking reactions and emails. Some, so tell us about that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Outlook, um, disallow reactions on specific emails, MC six, seven, zero, triple four. Uh, reactions and emails. Uh, you can like an email. You can say you know various different little you know reactions up there. And I've I've always found these a bit funny, Daniel. Where I can react on my mobile, I can react on Outlook on the web or wherever. But the um, reactions they only display where they're supported, which would be mobile, the new Outlook, Outlook on the web. Not so much on on Outlook on desktop. So you'll get this email kind of summary of, hey, this many people have liked your messages or reacted to your messages. Go get your React Digest, uh, of course. Anyway, um, there's going to be some emails which maybe you don't want a whole lot of reactions, such as, hey, we're going to go through a restructure, and this is a leadership message that's been sent out to the whole org. Um, you yeah. might want to turn off reactions uh, on an email like that. So this is going to be a capability coming um, to uh, within the UI to disable reactions for a specific message. And uh, that is going to be rolling out late August, now-ish, expect to be complete in mid-September. Uh, yeah, I think uh, that that sums it up, but <laughs> certainly times Indeed. when you won't you won't want to have those reactions. Because imagine there's one thing to reply all to a message and say, "Hey everyone, mm. uh, this is how I feel about it," or "Hey everyone, yes, happy birthday, Daniel, happy birthday." Uh, but yeah, react, react, react. Let's uh, right. turn that off sometimes. Awesome. I awesome. I'm, I'm very I, well. I. You know, that's one of those, this whole reaction to email is, is very interesting because I don't think a lot of people know about it, at least the ones I work with, uh, you know, in the past had, didn't even know about it. And even if you do know about it, it, it doesn't really surface well that someone has reacted to it. it it's, it's just not, I, mm. I think they could do a better job at surfacing the information that someone has reacted to your email. Um, but you know, being able to disable this so that you know, uh, I don't want to know if people hate this or like it or whatever. You know, this is um, um, I want them to reply. That's another thing. Maybe you're like, I don't, I want people to reply to this if they want to give me feedback instead of giving me a reaction. I don't know. Um, so being able to turn this off, I think, is very interesting. Um, and it'll be interesting to see if they if they're gathering any telemetry to see how many people turn it off or if people just don't realize it's even a thing and and leave it uh, it's just not surfaced well in my opinion so i, I don't think most people mm. even know it's a thing yep yeah i think you're right but anyway if you feel like reacting to uh to the message center show uh, mm. and you want to say, hey, we've really loved this episode, then do give us a thumbs up so that others will uh, will see and agree. Uh, do drop your comments in after this episode too. We do appreciate the, the regulars there that are giving their opinions and sharing their thoughts and even giving corrections too. So, you know, thank you for 
for uh, for sharing in um, the accuracy of this mess of this message center show. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. And yeah, as Daniel uh, often will, will remind us all that there are other places to connect with us on socials to to share and to care and to share that information to tell us what you also care about throughout the week, uh, and that way we can also um, share in those uh, thoughts and reactions too as we discuss it on the show. Anything yeah, else absolutely. you want to add, Daniel, on this three hundredth episode that I don't celebrate because I'm waiting for five hundred. <laughs> I, you know, I think um, we are just very grateful for all of you listeners and watchers out there who uh, continue to support us. And I think that, uh, you know, I had some great reactions this past week at the 365 Educon conference with I gave away so many stickers. I'm going to have to order more. Um, You know, it's so much fun to talk to people about keeping them uh, up to date with changes and how they can use that in the adoption of those services within the organization. This is why we do it, people. We love doing it. Um, and, uh, and it's because of you. So really appreciate it. Please, would you just share out this episode and say, hey, I got some value out of this. We'd greatly appreciate that. And make sure that you check out our socials channels, all of them. You're going to see a post there that tells you how to enter the contest for the giveaway for ESPC, the three-day pass. So make sure you check that out. Um, But thank you, everyone, for being part of, being a real part of what we do here. We greatly appreciate it. Uh, Thank you so much. Yep. Great. So see you at 301 next week, maybe? Yes. Yes. You'll be back. Bye for now. You will too. (laughs) Bye.